Welcome to Doing More. I'm Erica Cardenas. Today's show is all about reading, so of course we're at the library. That is the Southeast Regional Library in Gilbert, Arizona. To a young child, a library card can be a ticket to a world of fantastic adventures, a doorway to understanding the universe and our place in it. And the key to opening that door is the ability to read. That's where Read Better, Be Better comes in. It's big kids teaching little kids and it's getting fantastic results. Hi, my name is Sophie Etchard and I'm the founder and chief executive of Read Better, Be Better. The concept of read better, be better, so putting those two things together, the reading and the being better, came from be excellent and be kind. And um, it's about being excellent and then being kind is use your word to please. Reading isn't enough. We want our kids to be successful in whatever it is that they want to do. We actually use eighth graders to implement the reading comprehension program with third graders. So we're inspiring a generation of kids who want to help other people be successful. And those two Two things go hand in hand for me you can't it's not good enough to just be successful yourself you got to share that you got to inspire that and in others and we that's how we create community change Encouraged. we run a 90 minute program twice a week after school all of our staff are trained on the structure we have a really really structured program that repetition of consistent structure is really important so everyone's greeted with a handshake when they come in they're treated with respect we take attendance and then for 45 minutes they will do the curriculum with their big the big reads the book to the little so that the little's familiar with the story then the little reads the book back to the big and that's when the big plays teacher so they'll actually model hey this is how I interact with this text I'm gonna write things that popped into my head I'm gonna write them on a sticky note and stick them on the page and then the final reading the big reads back to the little again and the little has his or her book of sticky notes um, and they'll tell us anything that popped into their head while they were reading that book. You are bringing those words to life. I began with a pilot, so we actually ran a pilot to test the idea and the concept and the curriculum. So we did that with 32 children in Phoenix and that pilot data showed about three times growth so that our kids were improving three times more than kids who were not participating in the program. I would urge anyone to please read in whichever language is comfortable for you. That's what you want to pass on to your kid is just that, that reading is important, that you love it. We know that if kids enjoy what they read, and that will come from a parent, that will come from anyone who's reading with them. If you enjoy it, they will enjoy it because they like being with you, they like being around you. So read what you love, read what they love, and spend time on that whenever you can. Wait, what? Oh my God. I want to inspire in our kids, not only enable them, equip them, empower them to be successful in whatever it is that they want to do to create community change. We need to equip kids with the tools to be successful, but that inspire them to be good people. Now that's a great program. Once you learn to read, you'll definitely want to get one of these. It's one of the best values around town because a library card is free to all Maricopa County residents and it's most likely free in your area as well. So grab one today and pick up a good book. Once a child can read, it's amazing what they can accomplish. I'll be back with more good news stories on Doing More right after this. Welcome back to Doing More. Today we're talking about reading, so it makes perfect sense that we're at a library. But libraries today are so much more than just books. There's a tremendous amount of digital information and entertainment available. Music, movies, even TV shows and magazines. But to take full advantage of all a library has to offer, visitors need a different type of literacy, digital literacy. That's why Cox Communications is partnering with the American Library Association to teach essential computer skills and to help bridge the digital divide. Hi, I'm Stephanie Healy, Director of Public Affairs for Cox Communications.
The partnership between Cox Communications and the American Library Association was really a natural evolution from our Connect to Compete program. The intention is that we know that people come to the library to get information, um, perhaps to access computers, to be able to do all the things that they may not be able to do at home. So we partnered with the library to be able to provide online resources, in-library resources to help bridge the digital divide. The digital divide really is a couple of different things. It's people that don't have access to the internet at, at home. It can also be people that don't have access to computers. And it can also be computer illiteracy, so people that don't know how to use computers. So what's really interesting to me is that the majority of middle and high school teachers say that they assign online homework, yet the teachers say that only 18% of their students have access to computers and hardware to do that homework at home. We know how important it is that students have access to computers both at home or in the community and the Cox Connect to Compete program allows them to have access to the internet, the partnership with the Library Association and Pima County Libraries and nationwide allows them also if they don't have a computer at home to be able to go into the library and access computers and also get the um, skills and learning and tools that they need to be able to effectively use computers. So as part of the partnership with the American Library Association, there's a number of different learning modules that people can access in the community. Um, it starts from the beginning, where if you're just starting to use a computer, the basics, how to use a Mac computer, how to use a PC, um, how to use Word, how to budget effectively, how to build a resume, how to search for jobs, privacy and security online, um, social, social media tools, how to use Skype, how to use Facebook. So this is all part of the Cox Digital Academy and our partnership with the Library Association. So now you can read and your computer skills are pretty sharp. If you're a student, the world is your oyster and there isn't anything you can't tackle. Just ask these amazing Westwood Warriors. Times are changing exponentially, like technology is just becoming ingrained in our society almost. We're in a world where everything's automated and you have to really know how to design and operate these newer, better machines. Robotics is ubiquitous every day, so we've got robotic vacuums driving around in your house. We now have robotic cars. Kids learn how to run those and live with those, but really how to design and uh, be a creator and innovator. I'm Michael Wang. Um, I'm a senior here at Westwood High School, and I'm the vice president of Westwood Robotics. Robotics kind of has the stigma of like being for like nerds or people who are good at math and science and that kind of stuff. But really, um, the way I see it is that anyone can do robotics. Once you get here and once you kind of get like comfortable and you're talking to people and your ideas are kind of accepted, that's when it becomes more comfortable. I'm Jill Barsena. I'm a senior and I'm the president of Westwood Robotics. In Westwood Robotics, we design robots, we build the robots, and then we compete with other teams from all over the world. Westwood Robotics has members from all over the place. We have diverse gender population. A lot of times you go to competitions and you see an all-male team and we're not like that. Um, we're all different colors, we're all different ethnicities, we're all different nationalities. Hi, I'm Tom Saxon. I teach robotics at Westwood High School and also engineering and precision manufacturing. Robotics really teaches kids uh, perseverance, a little bit of grit, uh, and uh, a little bit of the struggle of coming up with a unique, clever, and uh, workable design. It's good to show kids that uh, technology doesn't have to be uh, a long, boring science lesson. Honestly, when you're a kid, you're curious about everything, right? And so when you see this giant piece of metal driving around, you want to know what it is and you want to know how it works. And I know that's inspired a lot of our members to actually come do Westwood Robotics because they were kids, they saw like the robots driving around uh, at demos and then they were like, I want to do that someday. These kids are high school kids. And so that means that we're the next generation of engineers and programmers and um, manufacturers. Robotics is an expensive program. Uh, it's expensive to build the robots themselves and then to enter the competitions, the registration fees. And Cox has been a huge supporter and they've been uh, probably one of the best supporters, not just in 
in providing us resources, but also in providing a vision. We're super grateful for everything that Cox has done for us. We know it's a large investment, but um, it's an investment in our future, really. And Westwood Robotics is very grateful for that. Thank you, uh, Cox Communications, um, for all the support that you've given my team throughout these past years. And I am so thankful for our partnership, and I am excited to see where it takes us in the future. We wish the Westford Robotics team the best of luck in this year's competition. Coming up on Doing More, we'll explore the healing power of music. Don't go away. For more great videos highlighting all that's happening across Arizona, visit yourview.com. Welcome back to Doing More, I'm Erica Cardenas. Kids love to be read to, and the Maricopa County District Libraries, as well as the library in your area, offers dozens of story times each week for kids of all ages. Kids also love music, and for 18 years, Cox Communications has partnered with the Santa Barbara Bowl to provide community outreach programs, like the Pickleberry Pie Hospital Concert Series, a unique program bringing smiles and laughter to young faces at Cottage Children's Medical Center. If we ran the hospital, now we'd do everyone a favor. We'd make every drop of medicine vanilla flavor. The people at the hospital are great, and Janie Wood is the, is the child life specialist, and she smooths the way and, and sets things up, and she finds out ahead of time which children are up for hearing music and which ones maybe aren't feeling so well, or they're down getting some lab tests or something. Lanny started with us uh, many, many years ago doing the Pickleberry Pie series, and just one, entertainment, two, bringing a lot of joy and enthusiasm to a place that's not always a happy place. When we go in, you, you know, you never know, room to room, and we can't really talk about the kids' illnesses or diseases or, or stresses because of the privacy issues, but we can see pretty much what the situation is when we go in, and we have to be careful about what kind of music we play. We have to be considerate of the, the hospital itself, you know, keeping the, the noise level down. Forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities, oh mother nature's recipes will bring And really all the nurses and the doctors that work there, they're, they're so friendly and you know, they're, they're participants because they're coming and going and setting up machines or, or whispering to the parents while, while I'm playing and so they're, they're totally into it and part of the whole uh, musical environment and sometimes I'll, if I'm at a certain point in a song, I'll make a reference to a nurse or a doctor who's in there and again just to kind of give them a little chuckle because their jobs are pretty stressful too. And take a glance at the F-14 high-powered airplane. The bare necessities of life. Music can transform, it can take you away, it can allow you to leave the moment that you're in long enough to take that feeling that you've got and laugh or cry or just relax. All right, Alex. Thanks for being such a good audience, Alex. I almost play all original songs that I've written. So they're funny songs. For the really young kids, I'll play lullabies. Or if, if someone's maybe on some kind of medication that makes them kind of sleepy. Hey, Logan. And then I have one song that I wrote and I left certain key words out of the song. And so I engage the kids by saying, hey, do you want to help me finish this song? And then they tell me their favorite food and their favorite band and favorite animal and then I plug it into the song. If Logan and I ran the hospital, we'd make every day a blast. We'd make all the stitches and the pills and the scars and the waking you up at two in the morning to take your temperature. A thing of the past. It's probably the most challenging gig, but at the same time, it's, it's really a, a beautiful uh, gift to be able to go in there and take the kids and their families away from all that for about five minutes or ten minutes or half an hour. But at the end of the day, it's really it's a great thing. Logan, you are a songwriter and you didn't even know it. Thank you for helping me with that. 
never underestimate the power of music. We want to thank our friends from Cox California Community and Public Affairs for sharing that wonderful story with us. When we come back, I'll share the tale of a treasure trove that began when a student traded in a shoe for a pencil. Sounds interesting. All that and more on Doing More when we return. Welcome back to Doing More. Today we're at the Southeast Regional Library where you can find just about anything. In addition to books, audiobooks, and ebooks, the Maricopa County Library District offers more than 6,000 free events and programs for all ages throughout the community because free is great, especially for teachers. Take a look. Ten years ago, our founder, Barbara, was in a classroom and she observed a situation where the student needed a pencil and went up to the teacher, handed her a tennis shoe, and the teacher gave the child a pencil. So Barbara asked, why are you doing that? And the teacher said, I don't have enough money to keep buying pencils for my students all the time, so I know if they hand me their shoe, they want their shoe back, I'll get my pencil back. It made an impact on her to see that this educator was really like stretching and trying to figure out like how do I keep getting these supplies and give them to my students but not like break my own bank. And that was really what kind of inspired Barbara to start Treasures for Teachers. She started asking businesses for donations of supplies, um, things like binders and staplers and pencils to give back to teachers. So it all started in, in our founder's um, garage and now we're in a 12,000 square foot warehouse We've been called a couple of things. One is Disneyland for teachers, um, but a more accurate one, there's no rides here, um, a more accurate one is Goodwill meets Costco for teachers. Our main goals are to save teachers time and money. So we try to provide as much supplies as possible here so that they can get it all in a one-stop shop. Um, and then we keep the prices very low. And you see where these things come here and they get kind of a second chance and they get the ability to kind of give back to the community and to give these kids one more chance and it's not like, you know, great, we used it for the school year, to the trash it goes. Now these things come here and now they've got this whole new life again where they can be part of the classrooms, they can be part of the kids' lives again. It's, it's kind of fantastic. We love to encourage anybody to come in and get a tour here at Treasures for Teachers because you can see the kinds of items that we're taking in the door. It's a lot of unique stuff, including like paper towel rolls, used binders, notebooks with some of the paper missing. We'll take all that kind of stuff, um, as well as any of your normal educational supplies like pencils and papers and pens. Um, and so for schools, if you're doing a classroom clean out, we'll come actually pick up those supplies from you. Um, businesses donating furniture like filing cabinets and chairs, teachers need that kind of thing. We'll come pick that up as well, um, but donors are bringing stuff in all day long. We've all seen the movie at the end of the summer, the kids are throwing everything in the air, the teachers are throwing everything in the air and they're going, all right, we're off, let's go enjoy a few days off, you know. But it is important, you hang on to these things that can be used again. Don't throw them out, bring them here, these guys are fantastic. And they'll definitely take good care of them and we'll reuse them and you know, you see all these teachers in here every day do whatever they can to resupply their classrooms. It's, it's awesome. We do want to say a really big thank you to Cox um, Communications for all the support that they've given, both in manpower um, and in financial donations. Um, this wouldn't be possible without your support. Treasures for Teachers, it's a win-win, right? So teachers are coming and getting supplies. Donors are able to help support their communities and their teachers and thus their students. And the students are the winners because they get the supplies they need to be successful and learn appropriately. We love to see our hardworking teachers getting a well-deserved hand. Today we've seen that reading and digital literacy can open doors and take you places. And one of those places might just be a STEM job with Cox Communications. Recently, the company held a job fair for its employees and encouraged those with a passion for science and technology to step up to a new challenge. Well, I'm very excited to tell you that today we're having our first ever internal career fair for our existing employees. Often when we do job fairs or career fair is for people from the outside, but we thought we would take a different approach today because we felt that our employees who are here today deserves an opportunity to look at other jobs so that they could grow their career. I mean, this is part of our enhanced employee experience, which is trying to invest in our employees who are already here. You know, part of 
growing them is to say, take a look at all the other job opportunities that we have. And we have over 25 different departments uh, featured here today talking to our employees about opportunities, places that they never even thought they could be interested in. I'm very, very, you know, blessed my you know, opportunity of being here and the fact that I have a job where I can, you know, go so many different places and I'd have the, you know, support and the training there to get me, uh, you know, to a successful level and succeed there as well. We want our employees to understand that where you start is not necessarily where you're going to end in your career. With, with, and some of the folks might say, well, I don't have the skill set. That's okay. Because the great thing about working for Cox is we want to hire for attitude, but we'll tr we will train for skills, right? So, for example, for our fuel service tech, which is also featured here, uh, we'll take you through a safe six to eight week training course. So we will provide you the skills. If you have the right attitude, you've got the right motivation, we can train you and teach you all the things you need to do. In our engineering teams, we need uh, Cox employees who have a lot of different backgrounds and understand our business. They bring so much more to our engineering department when they come from those other groups. One of the biggest things that we're starting to see in our business and in our industry is transformation due to everything becoming digital. So that means there's a lot of new opportunities in STEM. Uh, those who are interested in the new technologies that are going to transform what we currently use today. Uh, we've had folks in the call center that has moved over in, into as a UHT and then moved into um, outside plant maintenance. Um, and then from there we've had folks and then we go into the MTC or go into um, engineering. The, it's, the, the key is just getting your foot in the door. You get your foot in the door, there is so much opportunity within the company that you can move into and gain different experiences. And it's, it's, it's great because you could, you could spend your whole career just within this company. So I would like to make this, you know, potentially the career I uh, retire from. You know, I've worked for a lot of different places and this is the first one where I wake up, up every day excited to come to work. As Dr. Seuss wrote, oh, the places you'll go when you can read. Be sure to take your kids to the library. It's a thoroughly modern place, and the allure of a great book is timeless. We want to thank the Maricopa County Library District and the Southeast Regional Library for hosting us today. I'm Erica Cardenas, and I'll see you next time for more good news stories on Doing More.